guys, it's Reagan, and today I'm here to do a pretty fun video that I've been seeing going around booktube and I have personally loved watching every single time. Definitely inspired by Jesse the Reader and Monica over She Might Be Monica. That's right, today I'm going to be doing the reacting to unpopular bookish opinions over on my Instagram, which by the way, here's my feed if you're not following me, check it out. I asked you guys to submit some of your unpopular bookish opinions and we're going to go through some of them today and chat about them. Opinions are opinions, so if you have them, that's totally fine. If I disagree with them, that's totally fine. That's the fun about discussion in this world. People have differing viewpoints, and that's what makes things so interesting. So please don't be upset. They're all just opinions at the end of the day. But anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into the questions. First question out of the gate, we're starting a little controversially, and that is, I think the Red Queen series is overrated. I agree with this sentiment, and I think I mentioned this in a video probably now, like two, three years ago, but I did not love this series either. I ultimately only read the first one, but it's something that I just personally didn't enjoy that much. I thought it was okay, didn't blow my mind. So I definitely agree with this unpopular opinion, so I figured why not start a little dramatic out of the gate, but yeah. I agree with that. Definitely one of the most popular, unpopular opinions fall within like the same range or the same vein. One of them is, I hate hardbacks, I prefer floppy paperbacks. Or the other one is, I hate paperbacks, I prefer hardbacks. And for me, it depends on the scenario, on which one I personally prefer. Thinking about reading, I mean, a floppy paperback, there's literally nothing better than this. I mean, this is the ultimate reading experience. It just falls open, it's so easy to turn the page, this is incredible. But from like an aesthetic bookshelf standpoint, I really love hardbacks and I think they just look really nice, but from a commuting standpoint, they're heavier than a paperback and they're more difficult to read. Like standing on the train holding a hardback in one hand, I'm just like not very strong, maybe I should do like more exercises, but it's hard. One random unpopular opinion that I have that other people might disagree with is that I actually like the look of like having paperbacks in the beginning of a series and then having like one or two hardbacks near the end. I don't like to mix them. I don't like to have book one paperback, book two hardback, book three paperback, but like books one and two in paperback and then getting a hardback. I like the look of that. Next unpopular opinion is I like to get my books in the library and not buy them. So I love the library a lot. Obviously, I'm a book collector. That is no secret. I love having a collection of books, but growing up, going to the library was probably one of my single-handed favorite things. My mom was actually a bookseller at Barnes & Noble like in middle school of my life till early mid high school. That was her job. Before she had that job, she worked somewhere else. And so we went to the library every week and I just remember loving just getting my stack of books to have. I also find the library was a way for me to find a lot of series that I've never heard of before. Bookstores tend to just have new releases or very popular series, which there's nothing wrong with that. That makes sense from like a store's perspective, but the library just has such an expansive collection. I loved it and I also love talking to the librarians and like getting their recommendations and in school I mean the library was like my hangout I was always like BFFs with the library I remember I felt so cool because every time the library got like a new shipment of books my librarian would always let me see them before she put them out on the shelf so I could have first dibs sometimes before they are wrapped in their protective plastic but yeah but then obviously when my mom started working at Barnes & Noble that's when my collecting started to happen because we got the books at a good discount. Um, but yeah, I love the library. Library was a very special place in my heart. I wanted to be a librarian for a large part of my life. Someone said that the dark artifices are their least favorite Cassandra Clare books. This one hurts a little bit. Just a little bit. I mean, for me personally, thinking about her series, I've read all of her books that have been released. Um, I would rank them Clockwork Princess series, the the Dark Devices, I think that's what it's called. Dark Artifices, The Mortal Instruments is Miley's favorite, that six book span. I think The Dark Artifices and like the Clockwork Princess series is just leagues ahead of that. So maybe that's my personal and popular opinion, but oh my gosh, I love The Dark Artifices. I was about to give up on Cassandra Clare until I just decided to give this series a try. Eating Midnight destroyed me, like destroyed my soul, ripped it out, ate it for breakfast. Can't wait for that next one. Coming out in like four weeks, I want to say, less than. 
Ooh, it's gonna be emotional. Next one is that they don't like Rowan or they don't like the Rowan ship or him as a character in the Throne of Glass series. I agree with this. I have to say my least favorite books in the Throne of Glass series was Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storms. In fact, I almost gave up on the series after Empire of Storms. I just like never felt very connected to Rowan as a character or the relationships that Rowan like was involved in. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are so many characters in this series I love, but Rowan is not one of them. I love a lot of the main characters, Lorcan, Kale, Dorian, Gabriel, Adian. Um, but like Rowan's definitely my least favorite. He's growing on me a bit in Kingdom of Ash, but generally speaking, I agree. I agree. I endorse that unpopular opinion. The next unpopular opinion you guys sent in was I prefer standalone books to series. And I think this has a lot to do with what your preferred genre is. For example, if you really love contemporary or literary fiction or even historical fiction, this makes a lot of sense because generally those books are standalones. Like Donna Tartt doesn't have a sequel to The Goldfinch. <laughs> but for me, I love fantasy, so like the longer the series, the better. Like six books, seven books, thousand page plus. Give it to me, I'm here for it. So I see this unpopular opinion and I understand it, but because I love fantasy, like I don't want a standalone Name of the Wind. That's like my worst nightmare. Patrick Office is trying to make that happen because the third book still has not come out. But anyway. Moving on. This is an interesting unpopular opinion and I'm very curious to see what you guys think about this, but someone said Percy Jackson is better than Harry Potter. As someone who loves both for very different reasons and both were huge parts of my childhood, I still am leaning towards Harry Potter because I love that traditional medieval magic setting, but I do also love Percy Jackson so much. I mean, to me, they're like harmonious in my heart, not competing, like they're both my children. One I might like a little more, but that's not the other child's fault. They're both great. This one hurts my heart a little bit. The Ember and the Ashes series is dull and overhyped. <sighs> I love that series, but I respect your opinion, even if it's wrong. Bookable said, I don't hate dog earring pages. There I said it. Honestly, don't think it's that big of a deal to do it. If you asked me this question two years ago, I would have been like, aghast. I'm like, where's your bookmark? Don't do anything to your books. What are you doing? But honestly, I don't know if it's as I've gotten older and I can never have a bookmark near me and I'm always reading in strange places with commuting or there's just always something going on. I have something to admit to you guys. I've started dog earring pages sometimes myself. <laughs> It's just so convenient, okay? I don't know what to say. I, I've lost so many bookmarks as of late that it's just what I've had to resort to. So I agree, I don't judge. I don't judge people for dog earring, for writing, for highlighting. It's your book. I wouldn't say, I don't endorse this for a library book because that book has to last a long time and a lot of people are gonna be reading it. So, you know, think of it more as communal property. But if it's your book, hey, do what you wanna do. Write it up, dog ear it up. It's yours, it's yours. I don't like Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice and I don't understand why so many people love him. Honestly, this is fine because less competition for me in winning Mr. Darcy's love and affection and heart for all of time. I don't want everyone in love with him because that's more competition. So that's great. You don't have to love him because I have enough love for him because he's amazing. Now I'm just thinking about that scene with the rain, Keira Knightley, and he's like, and they're in the pergola. I'm crying, they were crying, we're all crying. Someone said, I honestly can't stand Sarah J Mass's books. They're basically romance book with a fantasy cover to hide. To be fair, in a lot of ways this is accurate. That being said though, as someone who likes fantasy with a hint of romance every once in a while, I personally enjoy them for that reason. I don't read a lot of contemporary, therefore I don't read a lot of like romance novels. So I feel like Sarah J Mass's books are like my form of like contemporary romance, but it's the fantasy version. I also think in Sarah J Mass's credit, aside from her romances, which I think she writes really well, they're very, very like, you're on the edge of your seat waiting for something to happen. I think she's great at writing like anticipatory romance. 
I also think her plots and her scenes and her like fighting writing, for example, fighting writing, her like combat writing and her general overall plots um, are really good. What I'm trying to say is I still feel like her plots have a lot of substance aside from the great characters and romance, which is why I personally think her books are incredibly entertaining. But I can also understand why you wouldn't love them if you're not a big fan of romance because romance is something that's quite integral to the plot which is why I love them, but I can get why some people wouldn't enjoy that. Someone said I hate deckled edges. Aesthetically, I like them, but they're not very practical when it comes to reading. Like, it's hard to turn those pages. And there's also something satisfying being able to be like, I'll show you what I mean. You know, like this, and it's very difficult to do this when it's deckled. So I understand where you're coming from. And I think I'll end this video on this note. I will never read Harry Potter, no matter how incredible people say it is. <sighs> okay. In a way I can understand, because I feel like I'm that way with some authors like John Green, no matter how many times people tell me The Fault in Our Stars is amazing, I just feel like I'm never going to read that book because it's just not my type of genre. So in a way I can understand this objectively, how you can make this stand but my heart still hurts and I want to be like, just give the magic a try. Just give it a try. But you know, if the pressure is what's turning you away, I'm going to play it real cool and be like, yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, you know, it's fine. Alrighty guys, that is reacting to unpopular bookish opinions. Let me know down below some more bookish opinions that you guys have as I love reading them. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe I will do another one of these in the future. In the meantime, I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye.